We know protests always bring up questions surrounding First Amendment rights. What's allowed? What can be prohibited? Yeah, it's a fine line that university presidents are walking, and not just here, but all across the country, uh, between peaceful protest and non-disruptive protest and free speech. So we brought in our legal analyst, Stephanie Haney, to talk, talk more about this. Stephanie, let's start with what the university is saying. What, what is the president saying? Yeah, we did get a statement in from the president from Case Western. And as Kaitor mentioned, 20 student protesters were detained, not arrested or charged with the crime, but their speech was still limited. And we have to look at the difference between a public and private university here as well. So here's the response this morning from Case Western President Eric Kaler. He showed support for demonstrations, saying open discourse and the free exchange of ideas are hallmarks of higher education and that challenges to the status quo are what make universities, especially ours referring to case, such powerful learning environments. He went on to say, the university supports free speech rights of the students speaking out in support of Palestinian liberation in case will protect those rights in accordance with the university policy. So let's look at that university's freedom of expression policy. That controls here because case is a private college. It's available on the CASE website, and it states that any demonstrations cannot unreasonably interfere with university operations. Now, Kaler specifically said setting up encampments on campus property and the use of disruptive sound does, in their interpretation, interfere with university operations, so that will not be allowed at CASE. Let me ask you about this, this particular verbiage that you just mentioned. How do we know unreasonably interferes? I mean, what are the parameters of that? What exactly does that mean? Is there a universal meaning to that, or is it per university? Well, because this is a private school, the code of conduct controls here, and what unreasonably interferes with university operations is vague. So for a little bit of guidance here, let's compare that to the standard for how demonstrations can be controlled constitutionally. This would apply at a public college to kind of guide us here. So let's look at that standard. Students not being able to set up an encampment during a protest would fall under the category of time, place, and manner restrictions. There's a clear constitutional standard for that. What makes those okay at public schools when it comes to free speech rights? Restrictions must be content neutral, which means it can't have anything to do with the actual message. They have to be narrowly tailored to meet a significant government interest and have to leave open other means of communication. So this standard, again, wouldn't exactly apply at case because it's a private school, but if it did, we can say not allowing encampments is content neutral. They're not saying encampments are only allowed if you're saying X and Y, but not Z. We do know that the interest here would be making sure university operations are not disruptive. Now, whether that would rise to a significant interest, there's room from argument there. Is stopping encampments actually something that would accomplish that goal? As I said, room for argument there. If we look back to the university policy, though, we see it mentions restricting speech when there is unlawful activity, danger or the intimate threat of danger, and restrictions on movement. Now, the third part of the constitutional test, are other methods of communications being allowed? That answer here would be yes. We know that the police took down the tents the students had put up, and then the students were allowed to return to the Oval on the Case campus where they had set them up. So if this were on a public school campus, most likely a permissible restriction there. But the code of conduct there is what's going to give us that guidance as to what is an unreasonable restriction or interference with the operations. Okay. Very tricky situation. Stephanie, Stephanie thank thanks. you.